And Allah says, look my servant, I want to give you firdaus. I want to give you firdaus. If I give you too much money right now, you're going to be like the bad boys outside there. He has to basically be Mr. Cool with his shades and he has to have a convertible car. He's Mr. Cool, man. He's a little halo. He's in this little low, you know. He's got, he's got to have that. And he's got to have such loud speakers in his, in his uh, back that his own dr his eardrums are saying, Tuba, 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 please, guy. I'm going to burst. I'm going to burst. Have mercy on me. His own eardrums can't take it. But he wants to show the whole street who's the bad boy. Yeah? You think you might get money and you might become like that. Allah is stopping you because Allah probably wants you to go to Jannah. So Allah restricts people. Allah said no, Allah said, If Allah opened the risk of people and gave everyone what you wanted, everyone will give you this, give, take that money, take this house, take this property. If Allah did that, there would be a lot of corruption on the, on the earth. Abu Hurairah was given a small pouch of dates and the Prophet had told him to keep eating from it and he said that I ate from it for a very long time. I just put my finger in, take out a date and eat it, a small pouch. One day, one day I said, let me see how many dates in this. There could have been 10 dates in there maybe, but he ate maybe hundreds of dates. And then he opened it up and there were only so many dates and then after that there were only so many dates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works from behind the veil. Nothing happens by magic in this world. Allah works behind the veil. He does all of these things from behind the veil. We need to put our trust in it. Have trust that Allah will give you barakah. They were honored that the sea would open. The animals would be subordinated to them. When they read the Quran, everything was there under their control. But we have left the Quran. We have left the teachings of Quran. We have left the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu And today we face nothing but humiliation and humiliation and humiliation. Quran is saying, "Ma atakum al wa ma nahaakum anhu fantahu." What the Prophet says, stay. What the Prophet forbids you from, forbid yourself from. The Quran says, "Man ata al rasul fakad ata Allah." Whosoever obeys the Prophet has obeyed Allah. Being conscious, realizing that every on every step of this venture, Allah is watching us before marriage. Don't be involved in unlawful illicit relationships. Start off on the right foot before marriage. With that person as well as in your own life. If somebody has a habit of doing bad unlawful activities before marriage, unless you know he really sincerely repents, then it's given that after marriage, you're not gonna change anything. You know, some people think, okay, until marriage and then after marriage I'll sort myself out. Seriously. You know, I know. For a fact, if you have a habit before marriage, you could have 10 wives, so you're not going to sort yourself out. When you finish, Rasulullah asked him, Afarat ya Abul Wali, have you finished? And he said, Yes, I have said what I wanted to say. And Rasulullah just recited to him Surah Hamim as Sajda, which had been freshly revealed to him at that time. He said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hamim, Tanzeel min al-Rahman al-Rahim, Kitab fussilat ayatuhu Qur'anan arabiyan liqawmin ya'lamun, Bashiran wa nazira, fa'arada akhtharun fahum la yasma'un, wa qalu qulubuna fi yakinnatin mimma tad'una ilayh, wa fi adanina waqru wa min baynina wa baynika hijabun fa'amal innana amilun, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهٌ وَاحِدٌ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا إِلَيْهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ وَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ كَافِرُونَ قُلْ أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَكْفُرُونَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَرْضَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ وَتَجْعَلُونَ لَهُ أَنْدَادًا ذَلِكَ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَ مِنْ فَوْقِهَا وَبَارَكَ فِيهَا وَقَدَّرَ فِيهَا أَقْوَاتَهَا فِي أَرْبَعَةِ أَيَّامٍ سَوَاءً لِلسَّائِلِينَ And he just kept on reciting and reciting. Whatever he had, he would give. You know, if they asked him for a garment in his hand, then I swear by Allah that garment 
would not reach his home, let alone his blessed body. On one occasion, a woman, on seeing that Rasulullah was on need, she needed a garment for him. And she gave it to him, Ya Rasulullah, I made this for you, I knitted this for you. Ya Rasulullah, I beg you, take this and wear this. Rasulullah takes the garment. And as soon as one of his companions sees the garment, he says, Ya Rasulullah, look how beautiful this garment is, give it to me. In spite of the fact that Rasulullah himself was in need, he takes the garment and gives it to his companion. And when they would ask for the garment that he is wearing, Allahu Akbar, even then, there was no hesitation. He would take off the garment that he's wearing and he would give it to the person in need. And then he would go and borrow a garment from the likes of Sharabil ibn Hassan and the other companions and he would wear this garment. يكفي بروقا صافيا يكفي بروقا